Hello, beautiful souls. Lori Rising here, star medicine channeler and sacred guide. Welcome to the Virgo new moon on September 14th at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. How's your Virgo rebirth going? <laughs> so when I'm recording this, it's actually September 9th. So we are in the heart of the amplified Mercury retrograde and Virgo energies now. It might not be super comfortable yet. You might be in the wax and wane <laughs> of it, the yes or no, or maybe of it, where you're being invited into new spaces and frontiers of your life that are going to serve you better, but you might still be in the resistance of what you've known and those patterns, even if they're uncomfortable. So remember, Virgo energy is the servitude space in our lives. And what's super important in that is to get to the root of it and where is it coming from? Are you serving yourself or others from a place of love, from the heart-centered space that the Venus retrograde just activated? Or are you continuing to do it out of obligation or from self-sacrifice? Because that's going to continue to gnaw at you and create more resentment in your life. So this is the perfect time to really bring that into the field and look at it without forcing anything. This is why we use retrograde periods where you don't take a lot of forward action. You let yourself sit with it, feel it out, and let it start to unfold as you have more awareness and consciousness around that. Speaking of that, we have seven planets in retrograde at the new moon, and of course, Mercury stations direct the next day, only hours after this new moon peak. So then we will have six planets in retrograde from there. And we just had Uranus and Jupiter go into retrograde. So you can be feeling a lot right now as these big planets slow down. And that really kind of brings that energy into the heart of us. So it's not so much out moving fast. It's like coming in. So let yourself continue to be gentle um, and really let yourself follow the desire to get into your balance practices, your alignment practices, moving the energy, clearing the space. This Mercury retrograde, I called it feng shui in your brain. And since then, I've actually heard a couple of other astrologers talking about it as feng shui as well. I think Pam Gregory called it feng shui your energy and someone else said feng shui your life. So clearly, clearly it is time to feng shui this bitch. And that means really let's look at any toxic patterns or toxic um, even substances that are coming in because this is the health axis. We just got through that huge rare blue Pisces supermoon, which was the most powerful moon of the year. This is probably the most um, exciting and harmonious new moon of the year. So these are really big and it has to do with the health, spiritual health, mental health, soul health, physical health. And there's something I'm going to highlight in that when we look at the astrological chart in a little bit, because Chiron is really doing its job in Aries as well for us. So we've got lots of things to weave together today. It's um, some really great um, energies coming through. So something to look forward to. But first, if you're new to this channel, I just wanna welcome you and say how happy I am that you found us. And please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're alerted when I do drop these transmissions and messages. What happens in these videos is I come on and talk about the biggest energy that I'm receiving through my intuitive channel and tapping into in the collective. So I'm not gonna go through all of the transits of these new and full moon periods, but I'm um, gonna talk about some of them that are really being highlighted for me as I tune into the energy field. And at the end, I share a little oracle reading so that we can tap deeper into the direct guidance of how to be best supported moving forward in these energies. They're always super fun, so definitely stick around to that. And lately, I've been sharing the chart 
for the new and full moon so that I can show you the aspects that I'm talking about. If you want to learn more about reading astrology chart, it's a great thing to stick around for. I hope you just stick around because you're getting lots of benefit and support and you enjoy my energy and the way that I share in this space. So I know some of you are waiting to hear who is the winner of the 1K giveaway. Yes. The last video was all about that. So I want to thank all of you that commented and participated in this giveaway. I'm super excited to share that the winner is Jersey Garcia 5836. So definitely get a hold of me. I'll probably try to tag you in the comments below this and we can get together. I can't wait to have that divine exchange with you. And to all of you, again, I just want to send you a heartfelt thank you for being here and making up the strength of this community. It's growing and it's getting bigger, brighter, and bolder. And I love that because that actually opened my channel even more. So just know that your presence here is such a gift. And if you feel called to like this video, to comment on it, let us know how you're moving through these energies and share it. It really does help. Um, it helps me to grow and it helps me to continue to show up here because I also have to grow my business and nurture myself. And um, that has to do with my time and how I can share and where I can share in my various containers and offers. If you want to know more about those, just head on over to my hub at therawandwildhearts.com or check out the link below. Back to this Virgo new moon. So like I said, Mercury will be stationing direct just hours after, and that's actually when the energies will start to pick up for us. Our minds will feel more clear, and the clarity hopefully is coming from the new spaciousness that you've created in your body, in your cells, in your energy, your soul, in your thoughts. And then you can move forward at that next level, and that's going to just propel every area of your life. So that's where it's like, I keep getting this, like we're going through this scrubbing period. It's like we're moving through this washing machine and these various retrogrades. And when we come out, we should come out sparkling. We should come out crystalline and be ready and feel refreshed and renewed to go forward. Like I said, though, right now, if you're watching this video, you might not be feeling that energy and that push quite yet. Um, I don't want to say push, but that opening quite yet because our minds are actually basically going through the scrubbing phase right now. And the health axis, right? So the Pisces Virgo health axis is really how can you um, drop into the new habits and the new choices for a healthier you, for a more clear, a more vibrant you. And this is in the body. It's in, it is in your nutrition. It's in herbs. It's in how the earth is here to support us. It's in how you eat. For example, I just went through a three-day cleanse and it was the easiest one I've ever done. So we have these periods in the astrological and cosmic tides and weather where we have more ease to make these changes and shifts in certain areas of our life. But we have to co-create with that. We have to make the decision. So when Mercury goes direct, that's where you're going to be at the place where you can make these declarations for your life, because hopefully you've started to feel the results of how you've been making small or big shifts in your life and bringing in more of that guidance and support for the clarity. Um, and then you say, yes, this is how I'm going to go forward. This is going to be a become a part of my lifestyle. This is going to be an intentional practice for me. So those are the things I want you to check in with. What are you doing on a daily basis, which Virgo really likes? It loves the rituals, the habits on a daily basis to create more clarity in all of your senses and all of your experience holistically. And how are you going to calibrate it into your new experience and into your intention. So when it comes to cleaning out the mind with the Virgo energy, we always want to look at the stepping off points that the astrology signatures are bringing for us, because that's basically the unlock to the soul growth, right? We don't um, use those energies as an excuse as to why we're 
living it or being it, um, which can, it, it seems like that's kind of a cheeky way to talk about astrology. Um, and it's like how we defend our limitations and that's not working anymore. That's old world. Like we're moving into new earth where we open up to the possibilities and we remember that we're infinite and we're evolutionary and that we're always growing and expanding. There's always something more available for us when we're in that place of full transparency and intimacy with this life instead of bypassing or defending something because that's how I am. It's just so important to always continually tap into that and see where we're at without judgment, without story. And that's where I was getting. So when you can transcend your past experiences and move beyond those judgments and stories and guilt that you're holding on to, that Virgo might have a hard time letting go of because they are earth, they're very grounded, and they're really good at holding on to that story of perfectionism. <laughs> so I'm bringing story back in. So always check in with yourself. If you're running something off of old programming or off of something that you've gone through in the past, how available are you to realize that in every moment you get to change? That in every moment you came to change? And how liberating does that feel? Because there is this spaciousness there. There's this place of expansion there. So notice if you're in contraction or I'm in expansion. And how can I change this? So let's tap into the earth energies to change it because Virgo is earth. And one of the biggest pieces of this harmonious new moon is the big grand trine that I'm sure you've been hearing everybody talk about from Pluto and Capricorn to the new moon and the sun in Virgo to Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus. So again, this is how we get the clue as to the elixir to the wound that we might be sitting in or feeling intensely at any moment, even if we can't quite put our full, wrap our full mind around it. And that's where Virgo can actually just kind of stay in a rut um, because they get stuck in the mind loop instead of getting out. So this is where you have to change your environment. This is where you have to pull in those new habits of health, those new daily habits that really activate something for you to find a softness and find a trust that brings you into an evolution that brings you into the change that prior to that the anxiety or stress may have basically pinched off from your view so i'm just going to show you the chart now and so you can see what i'm talking about okay so here, let's look at that Earth Grand Trine right here is the sun and moon in Virgo at 21 degrees. Yes, I'm using green for the beautiful grass that we're still seeing here in the summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and here is Pluto and Capricorn at 28 degrees. And here is Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. Now, Jupiter's at 15 degrees, so that's a little far reaching for this Grand Trine. But Uranus and Jupiter are conjunct because they're only seven degrees away. So we're going to give that to them because we love them together. So you see how that makes a triangle there. So this can be your easeful way into the elixir for when you're feeling that discomfort. And this is Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. And Jupiter expands anything it touches. And Uranus is all about surprise. It's about energy. It's about big shifts and changes in a moment, in an instant. So of course, this can mean that we might see more natural disasters having to do with the earth. Um, but also when we get into Taurus, Taurus is about security. So it's about your safety. So or your, even your perceived safety. So something new can come in in big ways that might be super exciting and activating for you. And as long as you let yourself be open to it and you don't dig your heels in, which is the fixed energy of Taurus in what you've known, this could take you to just great heights in your life when you open up to whatever it is coming through. But this is also about value. It's about your own money. So some something can shift with your own money, how it's coming in, how it's moving for you and how it's expanding and growing. It's also about your tactile senses and it's about beauty. It's about value, which can actually 
be a beautiful conjunct to the Mercury in Virgo theme of um, serving and finding value in that servitude and, you know, being in a place of appreciation and gratitude, because that's only going to open the giving and receiving flow in your life and bring more into you. When you offer more from a place of care, of um, excitement, and of um, nourishment within your soul. And then Pluto, of course, in Capricorn is death and rebirth to the systems and the rules and structures that we've known. So this is going to help shift that Virgo perfectionism as well. And it's going to show you that there are no rules. The best rules that you can possibly have are the ones that you create in your life that are going to be the biggest support to your unique signature and what you came here to do, because we're not a one size force all culture contrary to how we've been made to believe. So when you can like hear my voice in those moments and remember that it's actually way better that you don't do it the way somebody else does it, go out onto the earth, get out into nature, let yourself just be present in the full moment activation and you'll get new knowledge that comes from your cells of how it's gonna work for you much better. I mean, this is why we find ourselves in the predicament that we are with this linear school system and how so many people have struggled and suffered within it. There, it hasn't set us up for success in any way because it tries to force us all into a certain box that creates more convenience for the person that's guiding or captaining that ship. <laughs> so this is where Pluto and Capricorn is really asking us to die off and stop giving our attention and belief and our support to those system and systems and structures. And this takes our innovation. This takes us dropping into how do we create something new and unique? And then we come over to the sun and moon in Virgo. So of course, with the sun and moon, that creates that new moon where it's a dark moon and that's where the biggest birthing energy happens. That's where the magic happens when we feel the most free and the least vulnerable, right? Like that's so important to realize in these new moon periods and especially for Virgo, because when they feel vulnerable, it becomes immediate stress, immediate anxiety. And really that vulnerability isn't based on what's happening in the present moment. It's based on the stories that have accumulated probably about that perfectionism or imperfectionism that they see happening in their mind, but not actually in the reality. So this is where we really have to activate that earth um, magic of just letting ourselves use every sense that we have possible, connecting with all of nature, with all of the elements, and remembering that we are the elements. And when we make that connection, we flow and we open and we breathe life in a new way. So this is, uh, trine is very harmonious, right? This is an energy that we have to work at. This will just be available. So basically, if you can just step into it, like believe in your time. Now the Pluto and Capricorn, I wanted to talk about because it continues to square the nodes right here and right here. Now it's at 28 degrees, the nodes are at 25, so it's not exact anymore, but that's still really tight and we're feeling that. So Pluto's really wanting us to rework and redefine our destiny and um, look at how we've been self-sacrificing or looking for external validation for our own internal balance. But the thing that I wanna highlight here is Chiron. So Chiron is conjunct the North Node in Aries. It's seven degrees, so it's not a tight conjunction, but anytime we have Pluto and Chiron in, this is gonna bring up some of those big wounds in your life that really wanna be transformed. So look at what might be coming up for you in your confidence, in your pioneering, in going your own way, doing your own thing and doing it in a new way and how you might still be filtering yourself and also this comes down to your body and the health of your body, because when your body is healthier and more clear, it becomes the conduit to the messages and guidance that are always coming through in our innate guidance navigation system that we came here with, right? And that really is the foundation of our energy and our senses. So this is really gonna be supported 
by all of this Virgo energy and what's happening in the Mercury retrograde when it moves direct and we get that momentum is going to really take us to those lessons and learnings and epiphanies of those wounds that may have been um, activating in this square, this ongoing square that we have. Okay, so I hope that that was super helpful. And I feel like that was really where I wanted to go through this video. And let's just grab a quick card reading to see what the guides want to bring in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all, this is like this is some serious Mercury uh, retrograde stuff. Like the tech issues have been off the charts. Unbelievable what's happening that way. So just remember, instead of getting frustrated, remember it's the Mercury retrograde. Change the energy, leave, move, and um, reset, and come back in a refreshed space instead of a frustrated, resistant place. Interesting. So the first card is to the sea. And that card to me is, um, you know, you've got to go out on your own. You've got to let yourself feel what's coming up, what's being revealed, obviously, in these retrograde energies, and just give yourself that space. That's what I'm craving right now. I'm actually going to today go out to a lake um, because I just, I'm, I'm kind of tired of hearing everybody talk about all the stuff. And I know I'm on here talking about this stuff because I promised you that I would, but there was a part of me that was like, I don't even want to get on and talk about it. Everybody else has already talked about it. It's like, do I need to contribute more to the conversation? That's just, you know, what's coming up in the retrograde. That's where it's like, let yourself be with these questions that come up, these curiosities that come up without them meaning anything at the time but then let them just unfold into what they really do mean and what they really want to bring into your life. Because then the next card is truth be told. And that's when that truth within you is going to be revealed. It's not going to be somebody else's truth. It's not going to be what you're doing for somebody else or the lens that you think that they see you through or whatever. If you can really give yourself that space, like go to a lake, get out on the water, like paddle away from everyone else and just be with the chaos that might even be happening in your thoughts and just know that that chaos, if you can give it some space, it can actually come up and come down in new ways that are gonna give you more of your essence, of your truth, of your voice, of what you came here to know and be that nobody else will. So you're not gonna find it on the outside. You're not even gonna find it here with me. You're gonna find it within, in this space of, solitude like Virgos they need to have that space they need to have that grounding and that come back to center um, for them to come forward in new ways right so then the last card is not for you and I love this card because then there's the discernment because Virgo is the sign of discernment they're very discerning about things they really unpack things in the most beautiful way I have said this time and time again if I need to hire somebody to help me I want to hire a Virgo, like because they're mutable. So they have more of that permeability. And, you know, if I'm looking at the other sign that would be really great at doing tasks, it's going to be Capricorn, but they're cardinal. So they might have more of a set agenda and less flexibility in that set agenda. But a Virgo is going to be able to, you know, work with me and then do the thing really, really dang well. Um, so let the discernment just come in. You don't have to find it. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to force it. It'll just, you'll know what's not serving you anymore. You'll know where you're serving from a place that is not sustainable for you. You'll know the thoughts, the foods, the nutrition, the vibration, the frequency, the, the streams of consciousness that just aren't for you anymore. Because hopefully, even if you kind of waver back and forth where you try something out that's new, an embodiment, a technique, a tool, a practice, and then you come back and maybe you get back into like watching the TV or watching the news and going into the fear, whatever it is, right, that creates stress and anxiety, and you kind of bounce back and forth, by that time, you will have had enough energetic information on both sides to land with the new momentum that's going to come through and just free yourself up 
from what's been holding you back, from what's been anchoring you down and weighing you down and creating that stress and anxiety. Because y'all, let's remember, and this is going to be me in the Mercury and retrograde talking. Like I am really kind of exhausted with all of the noise out there. And I don't even tune into it. But like, I just know, and I can feel like all of the debates, all of the noise. And it's just, if we could come back to what is our root? What's our core here? And are we coming from that? If we could just come back to those questions with anything that we share in exchanges and relationships online, like whatever it is, is it, is it coming from a place of heart? Is it coming from a place of everybody's highest good? Or is it coming from a place of the story, the judgment, the defense, the competition, the comparison? When you're about to engage or exchange right now in anything, just ask yourself, where is this coming from? What's the motivation here for me? Is it coming from love? Is it coming from critical thought? Is it coming from the desire for the elevation and evolution of us all into benevolence, into abundance? Or is there a different motivation for it? And then just let yourself sit with that. Okay. I hope that this has been super helpful for you. <laughs> it's been an interesting one, I know. Um, I just want to let you know that if you want to do deeper work, around these new and full moons, if you want to engage in unbelievably supportive, integrative practices, embodiment practices, my membership community is the place to be. It is such a special and sacred space. And this is where we do intention work. We do ceremonial work. We do rituals. We do embodiment. We do breath work. We do guided meditation. We cry. We laugh. Oh, I mean, we, we clear the energy, we work with our light. There is so much goodness here. And the women that are in this circle, in this membership, have been there a long time. That's the validation. That's the confirmation. Like, this is very sacred to their lives. And it really comes down to an accountability for how we live an intentional life you know, moving in soul growth for the highest and best of ourself, but for the highest and best of the collective. This is the mission statement of the Wild Heart Ones, my membership community. I've never changed the price. It stayed at launch price. It is the absolute most inexpensive thing I'm pretty sure that I have in any of my containers. And I even have a, a two-week free trial in it. You get all of the replays. You don't have to be there live, but being there live, there's something very special in it. There's something very special in declaring that time and being in the energy. But when you come in the replay, that's also important because you're lifting and elevating the grid in whatever acupuncture point you're in in the world at that time with us beyond time and space. We're connecting through the field, the quantum field that has no time structure to it. So listen, head below to the link below, check that membership out because it feels like time that I start talking about it. I've never really talked about it. And it just feels like it's time for it to grow because this is the kind of support that we need to stay in this vibe that's coming through in all of this gorgeous Virgo energy for us. Like, I am your biggest cheerleader. I want this to be a part of your journey. And I want this to ripple out in your community because it will create healing for everyone and everything around you. Okay, y'all. Definitely hit the subscribe button. Watch for the next video. I'm sending you so much love at this time. Enjoy this harmonious Earth Grand Trine. Get yourself out in nature. Get your bare feet on the ground. Breathe. Do the breath work. And just, just love. Just love, just love on yourself more than you ever even thought you could. Until next time, don't forget to keep looking up.